Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Wheels and Tales. In this video, we are going to start with fourth chapter of ESG module. We are going to cover all these topics in detail. So let's let's start with the very first topic, which is introduction, and then we'll cover those four point one, four point one point two. Won't waste our time reading this stuff as we are will read this eventually when we are going to cover this chapter in detail <coughs> introduction to social factors so what we have already covered so far in this module we have covered e what is e is environmental so all the topics related to e we have already covered in chapter 3 F chapter first and chapter second both are more or less regarding introduction of esg now in chapter 4 we are going to study s part of esg s to s and then chapter 5 it is g and then there are two more chapters and then ninth chapter will close this by this reporting of esg so let's continue and close this module complete this module as soon as possible Social factors are relevant for from both business and the investment perspective and are increasingly being factored into investment analysis and investment decision. In many cases, investors expect companies to manage these issues by using a best-in-class approach, whereby a company is better than its peer on number of material issues relevant to the sector, occupational health, safety, or managing its impact on local communities. In other cases, social issue can become a focus of invest investable opportunity also like gender equality funds. Companies are increasingly expected to engage with their stakeholders openly, transparently and responsibly. This chapter first gives an overview of various social factors and their material impact on potential investment opportunities. It then outlines the most relevant social mega trends, highlighting their relationship with business activities and investment opportunities. Description are then provided to how to identify and apply material social factors focusing on social anal an analysis at country, sector and company level in both developed and emerging economies. Finally, all the above mentioned topics are covered, practically applied in case studies also. So let's start with the very first topic, which is explain the systematic relationship and activities between business activities and social issue including globalization, automation, artificial intelligence, inequality, wealth creation, digital disruption, social media, access to electronic devices, changes to work, leisure time and education, changes to individual rights and responsibility, family structure, changing demographies, urbanization and religion. Second, we have assess key mega trends influencing social change in terms of potential impact on companies and their social practices. Climate change, transition risk, water scarcity, pollution, mass migration, and loss and degradation of natural resources and ecosystem services. Investors need to note the different social mega trends that could have an effect on the businesses of the investing company. This section, this section looks at the systematic relationship between these social mega trends and business activities of the investing companies and it elaborates on the material impact of these trends on potential in investment opportunities. What are social mega trends? The social mega trends are long term social. The first, let's start with the very first thing. What are social mega trends? Social mega trends have an effect on the business of the industry companies. And what it is what it is are long term social changes that affect government society economies permanently over a long period of time so these are the trends like globalization automation and artificial intelligence and equality and wealth creation a b c there are many like there are other trends also like digital disruption social media is also another trend Access to electronic devices. When we, I was a kid, I don't have access to phones, iPhones, computers. But as I as I grow, my then now then I got first I got computer, then phone, and then Android, and then iPhone, and then laptops. No, Android, laptop, iPhone, tab. No, no. Android, tab, and iPad, and then iPhone. So then Mac. So the how how this is changed. But now the kids. 
are born with a tab in their hand, a phone in their hand, a laptop with them. So the access to electronic device also, this is also another trend. Changes to work, leisure time and education. Changes to individual rights and responsibility. Now the work has changed. No one have thought that we, could, we have to work two days in an office or no, we don't need to go to remote work. So that was not in the picture, but now it is. And it's quite successful also. Changes to individual rights and responsibilities and family structures. Changing demographies, including health and longevity, urbanization, religion. Some environmental megatrends have severe social impact as well. These include climate change, transition risk, water scarcity, mass migration. These have the these have several social impact also. All of them could, in extreme cases, result in mass migration. <coughs> But these social mega trends will change the way we live, work, consume, perceive the world, and as such, will pose new risks or opportunities for investors. Next, we will look at each of these mega trends in further detail. So, what we are going to cover in this video, we are first we first have spoke about what are the different mega trends, and now we are going to discuss those mega trends in little detail. First, we will cover with globalization, automation, artificial intelligence inequality in wealth creation, digital disruption, social media, changes to work, leisure time, education, changes to individual rights, responsibility, change to demographies, investors, initiatives, equitable circulation to COVID-19 vaccines, urbanization, religion. So we'll end this video here. No, I can't sing. If I sing, they, I, I would have a copyright strike. Na, 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 na. So this this chapter three was a long chapter, but this is not going to be very long. So let's quickly finish these things. <clears throat> and these we are familiar with these things, and it's the best thing that we already know about globalization, automation, AI, climate change, mass migration. We are mass. Uh, even I am also migrated from my place, and I'm living somewhere else. So this is part of my migration. But in, in, in what we have studied as when well as kid, mass migration means people moving from villages and going to towns, cities. One of the global biggest mega trends in the integration of local national economies into the global, into a global and less regulated market economy. The growth in global interaction has increased national, international trade and exchange of ideas and cult culture. The process is called globalization. Globalization is caused by the rapid increase in cross-border movement of cross-border movement of goods. Services, technology, people, and capital. Okay, I am part of globalization. Depending on the viewpoint, it can be viewed as a, either a positive or negative phenomenon. On the other, on one hand, it's it's stated to have led to increased efficiency in the market, resulting in wider availability of product at lower cost. On the other hand, it, on the other hand, it is claimed to be detrimental to social well-being due to social structural inequality. For example, offshoring due to lower wages of workers in the garment industry in developing countries clothes are now primarily produced in such countries like vietnam bangladesh china this has led to the disappearance of textile industry in western countries and offshoring can also takes place in other sectors dependency are as u.s based asian companies dominate the industry for mobile telephone computer it products european companies are more dependent on these suppliers next automation a link to the increased economic globalization in the, is a the trend of automation which is the technology by which process procedures is performed with the minimal human assistance. With the minimal human assistance, things are going on. We should keep, we should put this term in our brain. What is automation? Doing things with minimal human assistance. Techn using technology. If with the help of technology, conducting our process procedures with minimal human assistance. With minimal human assistance, with minimal human assistance. Some of the biggest advantages of automation industry are their debt is associated with the faster production and lower carbon labor, lower, uh, labor cost. And second, it replaces hard and physical or monotonous work. 
The larger social disadvantage, however, is that it displaces workers due to job replacement as technology renders their skills or experience unnecessary. It is expected that this trend will increase due to rise of AI. AI is expected to have a significant effect on such sectors such as healthcare, automotive, financial services, auditing, security, including military and creative, in particular advertising and video games. Example number one. The transportation industry is currently on the brink of becoming more automated and it is expected that some jobs are for driver, taxis, buses, trucks will disappear due to self-driving vehicles and this will be beneficial for companies that develop the best self-driving cars but less for those less traditional heavy goods vehicle companies that do not innovate. One of the largest expected implications of this is that automating the car transport industry, major job losses will occur. One possible solution is to invest in upskilling staff to enable the data transition to be more AI-enabled world. In trans- investors should take this into account when assessing the risk of an investing company. Next, inequality and wealth creation. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD. OECD organization E stand for economic C stand for corporation and D stand for development so organization for economic corporation and development analyzes trends in inequality and poverty for advanced and emerging economies it examines such drivers of growing inequality such as globalization skill based technological changes changes in the country's policy approaches it also assesses the effectiveness and efficiency of the wide range of policies including education labor market social policies in tackling poverty promoting more inclusive growth According to the OECD Center of Opportunities and Inequality 2015 report, the average income of the richest 10% of the population is about 9 times that of the poorest 10% across OECD. This is also called economic or income economic or income inequality, economic inequality or income inequality. So the average income of the rich, richest 10% of the population is about 9 times the poorest 10% across the OECD. There is increasing evidence that growing inequality affects economies and social societies. Educational opportunities and social social mobility may be reduced, resulting in a less skilled and less healthy society with labor, lower purchasing power among the lower and middle classes. This limits the total economic growth also. And an issue relating to the topic of inequality is corporate tax strategies, whether companies are too aggressive in their tax optimization strategies as a regulator put more focus on this issue. Some companies, for instance, in the technology sector have have had to pay huge fines others will need to adopt more conservative tax strategies in the future that will impact their bottom line digital disruption social media access to electronic Hmm, this is quite long devices another important social trend is the rise of digital disruptions which is a change that occurs with the new digital technology and business models affect the value of Proposition of existing goods and services. That this trend is closely related to the increased automation and rise of AI discussed in the subsection B above. Some exemplary cases of disrupting economies include Amazon, Uber, Airbnb. They have managed to enter an existing market but with different and more digital business approaches that their competitors effectively challenging existing businesses models. Business models. There are opportunities for investors who are about to invest preferably at an early stage in such companies. Although such investment can carry a high risk profile, a related consequence of digital technology is a huge amount of data that can be collected, stored, processed, big data, as well as the ownership or use of the data, including data privacy, monetization of data, etc. Big data has many opportunities, including more personalized services, products, and health treatment. However, controversies have arisen. Because some data are being used and sold in a more extreme or socially unacceptable way. As example include social media companies such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, selling data for political and marketing campaign. In the example, the Cambridge Analytica alleged using Facebook data to try to manipulate the election. Due to these types of scandals, there is a debate around the growing need for regulating this industry. This can affect the profitability of these companies and should be considered by investors. Finally, electronic devices are now found everywhere. Almost everyone, both in developed and emerging economies, who owns a mobile phone, in many cases a smartphone and tablet, and the Internet of Things is the next frontier, where semi-intelligent appli- appliances such as embedded systems communicate directly with each other and with the Internet and make autonomous, autonomous decisions. For investors, this disruption represent both risk and opportunities, and analysts need to take a forward-looking approach to determine which sectors or companies will thrive and which will struggle in a digital society. Guys, there are mm, mm, quite a few <laughs> trends. 
changes to work, leisure time and education, the way we spend our lives has changed dramatically over the last few decades. Various measures have emerged that aim to provide a broad sense of state of our society and how people lives like how people lives are evolving. OECD examines issues of well-being in a better life index which rates a wide range of developed and emerging economies. Guys, this slide is stuck. Oh, it is not. It is it not. Strange, very strange. I'm not able to zoom this, zoom in, uh, zoom in or zoom. I can't. But let's don't waste our time. Let's read this one. Changes to individual rights and responsibilities and family structure. In recent decade, not only has the way we divide work and leisure time changed, but also the role and importance of family, especially in developed countries. Individuals are also less reliant on the structure of the family for economic and physical security. The workforce has become more diverse. More women are now entering the labor market, which has provided women with more financial independence. However, in comparison to men, women are still more likely to become remain unemployed, have fewer changes to participate in the labor force, and often have to accept lower quality jobs when they do secure employment. Women also face wage gap in companies in comparison to men. To improve gender equality, a number of different initiatives have been created, and there is growing evidence that a more diverse workforce leads to a better financial results for the company. Some best in class funds and impact investors take diversity, gender, and the other type of diversity into account in their risk analysis and stock selection. Not only diversity in terms of gender, there should be diversity in terms of the way you think also. If all the women and all the men think the same way, what's the diversity there? What's the point of having people from different countries, different religion, when they still think the same? So there should be diversity of religion, diversity of color, diversity of thought also, which is more important. If everyone is cruel in this world, then it doesn't matter whether you're white or black. Okay, don't share your philosophy. <laughs> I won't share my philosophy here. Because sharing philosophy is... Uh, no one wants in this world, no one wants to... No one is interested in philosophy. Let's talk about climate change, water scarcity. Climate change and the neighboring effect of transition risk have social implication. A widespread call is that a transition should be just transition. In the process of adjusting to an economy that does not adversely affect the climate sector that employ millions of workers such as energy, coal, manufacturing, agriculture, and forestry. Must restructure? It is fair that the period of economic structural change will result in ordinary worker wearing the cost of the transition leading to unemployment, poverty, and exclusion for working class. Water scarcity, climate change has a negative impact on the availability of fresh water. Some corporations with high water usage pose a significant threat to clean and affordable water for communities. The construction of wastewater treatment plants and reduction of the groundwater. Overdrafting appear to be the obvious solution to the worldwide problem. However, this is not as simple as it seems to be for the following reason. Wastewater treatment is highly capital intensive, so there is a restricted access to, the, to this technology in some region. The rapid increase in the population of many countries make the race make this a race that is difficult to win. And there are enormous cost and skill set involved in maintaining wastewater treatment plants, even if they are successfully developed also. So the servicing of wastewater plants is also uh, capital intensive and not uh, easy things to do. Mass migration, the scarcity of fresh water and desertification due to the climate change in several emerging countries is believed to be one of the reasons for mass migration. Fresh water and desertification <coughs> from developing countries to developed countries where these issues are less present. But uh, terrorism is also one of the reasons. Many, many people are from those terrorists or po poverty is another reason. So people are moving to the better part, better part of the world. Climate change might result in an increase of environmental mig migrants with the most common projection that the world will have 150-200 million climate change migrants by 2050. Pollution and, the, and loss and or, or degradation of natural resources and ecosystem services. Factors like pollution and land degradation can also result in stakeholder opposition, social unrest and social unrest migration. So these, these can be one of the part of one of the problem, one of the part of the problem. So guys, this slide is not working. I'm not able to navigate this slide up and down, but I'm able to change the slide. So I have covered 
as much as I can cover. So I think I can cover this also. Changing demographics, including health and longevity, due to the improvement made in the healthcare and changes in the lifestyle, life expectancy is increasing. For example, female and male life expectancy from birth in the U.S. in the U.K. increased by two years between two thousand two and two thousand ten from seventy eight years to now eighty two years. Mm, seventy eight for men and seventy two point women. At the as of twenty nineteen, thus this stood seventy nine for men and eighty three for women. So this increased life expectancy combined with the falling birth rate have caused many developed countries pollution to age. The overall median age rose from 28 in 1950s to 41 in 2015 and forecast to rise is from 45 by 2015 in Europe. Or, other, or, or not in Europe, in our, our, not in Europe or UK but in overall world. So an aging population has a substantial effect of society. The ratio between active and the inactive part of the workforce drops, impacting national tax revenues and challenging pension system, including an impact on the pension pots that need to be last longer. Older people have higher accumulated savings per person than younger people, but spend less on consumer goods, which is a business risk for some industries, especially FMCGs, fast-moving consumer goods industry. In some categories, such as healthcare, expenditure rises sharply when population age. So I think I should end this video here. I can cover more topics, but I can talk about this topic. This is a very interesting question. Where should investors start when implementing social factors in their investment decision? Where should investors start? A good starting point is to determine which social factors are most controversial or financially material in the industry. Second is Investors can assess how exposed certain companies are to this so specific sector, specific social factors, and if how and how company manages this risk. This might depend on their business models or on the nature and geographical location of their business operation. Finally, where relevant, investors should also assess critical social factors in the supply chain. It should be noted that in the social element that are considered to have largest financial materiality depend on specific assets mostly related to their field of industry the sustainability accounting standard board SASB. framework gives guidance on the financially material topics within industries and social factors can also be categorized between those impacting external stakeholders such as consumer local communities and governments and groups of internal stakeholders such as companies employees see exhibit one for example of social factors that may affect the stakeholder so with this we can end our video and i hope you like this video there is some glitch i hope this glitch will be solved in next videos i don't want to do in so far we have covered so i will check after this after uh, ending this video so thanks so far for watching this video i hope you have a nice day take care bye bye